Kaum <lacht> This is the Cat Sandwich Fibers 2021 Advent Calendar. I am so excited to open these every day. I love MJ's yarn. She is a local to me, New Jersey dyer, and her aesthetic is just mwah, chef's kiss. You will see as we go through all of these. I am so excited for these. I cannot wait to see. So let's find day one and open that together. I have not opened the entire box yet to see if there are colorway names for each or if they're all just kind of like a mystery and special to the advent, but this is day one, this like electric ultraviolet purple color. So fun, so beautiful. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the calendar is going to bring, but this is going to be a perfect for the pops of neon that I do in my granny stripe blanket. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with it, but if you're not, I knit, or excuse me, crochet the uh, granny stripe crochet blanket with my yarn scraps and my overall scheme. I do a lot of color managing, is mostly neutrals and pastels, but then has pops of neon. So this will be a perfect color for the pops of neon, which I am running low on in my mini skein stash because I don't tend to buy a lot of neon colors. So this will be perfect for that. Good morning, everyone. It's day one of Vlogmas. I'm so excited in case you couldn't tell. It's been a while since I've had like a really big project. I feel like the last project that I had, the last big one outside of work, of course. Um, yeah, work is just like so busy. Anyway, um, outside of work, it's been uh, when I went to France uh, with Andrew, I felt like that was a big project because like planning it and also like making clothes for France and stuff like that. So this has been like the first time in a while that I've had a big project. So I'm really looking forward to Vlogmas. It is a huge undertaking because it is daily filming, daily editing, daily uploads. So I hope you guys enjoy it. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Jacqueline. I live in Brooklyn, New York City with my fiance and my two kitties, Jafar and Mika. <laughs> and Vlogmas is a time that I pull back the curtain on my life. Like I don't share everything with you guys already pretty much, but um, pull back the curtain on my life and show you what it's like to live in New York City and all of the like holiday things that happen in December in New York. So it's a lot of fun. There's so much to do in New York City all the time, but in December it's like on crack because there's, you know, all of the holiday markets and Christmas stuff to do and Hanukkah stuff to do. So it's just, yeah, it's amazing. So I'm really excited to take you around with me and show you. As per usual, I like plan out my calendar in advance. So like I know what I'm doing every day. So I know where I'm going to be taking you. It's just going to be so much fun. I can't wait to share it with you. Today is Wednesday, so of course I am working today. I am currently in like a hybrid work from home uh, and work in the office situation, a little mix up. Uh, I try to go to the office Tuesday through Thursday. That hasn't been happening a lot lately. The transition back to the office is harder than I expected. I think because there's just nobody that's going in. And I mean, I'm contributing to that by not going in. So like the whole reason I would even wanna go back is to socialize with the other uh, employees and my friends at work. So because a lot of people don't work in the office right now, it's kind of like not as fun to go. So I haven't been going, but I think I'm going to, you know, I'm going to keep trying to go at least a couple times a week. We'll see how that goes, but I'm working from home today. And uh, yeah. And then after that, after work, we have, of course, some holiday stuff planned. We're going to be decorating the house today. We'll see how far I get, uh, I don't think I'm gonna get to the whole house today, but at least I will start it. It will be a process that evolves over Vlogmas. Right now I am just reading a book. I'm reading Monty Don's Gardening at Longmeadow. It's what I picked at random of the several books that he has written. I checked it out from the Overdrive app uh, from the New York Public Library, which by the way, my library card is expired. So note to self, I mean, we will be going to the New York Public Library. Don't you worry. That's definitely on the New York holiday vlogmas agenda. So 
I need to renew that, um, but right now I'm just going to be reading a book until it's time to start the workday, so I will check in with you guys later. I am so happy you're here. Welcome to Vlogmas. It's going to be really fun. Hello. Just doing some makeup before, before? <laughs> some makeup before work. Guys, I don't even want to admit how long it's been since I've washed my brushes. It's disgusting. Voila! All right, I'm ready to start the workday. I have a bowl of blueberries here that I'm just munching on for my breakfast and I'll check in with you guys later on. At the end of Vlogtober, I mentioned to you guys that I got a new gardening space. There have been a lot of developments for that, so let's go see. I'll show you real fast. Isn't it amazing? I bought a uh, kit greenhouse, which I've put all the details about this stuff over on my Instagram account that I use just for gardening. It's Jacqueline is gardening in case you are interested in following that. But we put together this greenhouse kit. I laid this herringbone floor for it. I'm putting in a path right now. I'm in the process of doing this. So it's kind of just like a race to finish as much as I can. Kind of a race to finish as much as I can before the super, super cold weather is here to stay because I want to get some bulbs in the ground before then. So yeah, lots of progress. I'm in love with this greenhouse. It's just like amazing to have. And let's go see some of the seeds that are in here. One of my favorite accounts to follow on Instagram is this uh, account called Grow, or not Grow Zoe, Swan Cottage Flowers. She does grow alongs in her Instagram stories and she has the autumn jump starter going right now. So it's where you kind of sow seeds in the autumn and then they grow really strong and stocky over winter. They're very slow, like very slow growing. If I sowed these inside in my apartment, these all probably would have germinated by now, except for some of them which require like temperature fluctuations like the Orlea grandiflora to germinate, but yeah, it's all very slow going. These pots have been out here for, I don't know, two or three weeks now. And only just now are some of them starting to germinate. I love seeing these little like fuzzy seed pot, like when the seed is just about to germinate, it gets this kind of like fuzzy pop on it right there. I so rarely see something like that when I do them indoors. I think it's just because they germinate so slowly when they're out here. This tray might need a little bit of water. Um, but yeah, so some snapdragons going here, some uh, pansies, most of this is pansies over here, a ton of foxgloves. Uh, I'm trying some eucalyptus, no germination yet, but I've heard it can be slow. Some sweet peas, Orlea grandiflora, some sweet rocket over here, which has just started. To germinate it's also exciting I have a thermometer in here I'll show you it's a high low thermometer so it will show you the, obviously the lowest temperature that it gets in here and the highest temperature it's currently 53 degrees in here right now it's currently 53 degrees in there right now so I'm gonna leave the door open for a little bit today to kind of let some fresh air get in there for the seedlings and then I'll come and close it uh, probably once the sun passes over the greenhouse because it's going to really, really bake in there once the sun gets to the greenhouse and let them have some fresh air for the seedlings. Hello! All right, seeing as it's my lunch break and it's the first day of Vlogmas and I got my start on this YouTube channel by showing you what I was knitting and sewing, I feel like we should start Vlogmas with like a level set of what my current projects are just because I don't share things regularly on YouTube or Instagram anymore. It's something I really miss, but sometimes I'm just my consistency has not been on for the past few years now as life has just changed for me in a lot of ways. So I thought it would be really fun to show you the projects that I am working on right now. So kind of in like the old style of showing you my projects via the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast all those years ago. Um, and by all those years ago, I mean six. I can't believe it's been like 
wait, probably more than that, maybe seven years since I've been on YouTube. I don't know, but it's been a long time since I've been on YouTube. This is my sixth Vlogmas though. I cannot believe it. So let's show the projects that I'm working on, catch you up on what I've been working on and let's get started. Okay, so the first things I'm gonna show you, the finished objects. This is gonna be both knitting and sewing related. So the first one that I finished recently is this pair of socks. This is just a vanilla pair of socks, a two by two rib, quite a long leg. I like a fairly long leg on my socks. A fish lips kissed heel, fish lips kiss heel. <laughs> I'm very out of practice with this, clearly. A fish lips kiss heel, and then my recipe for a round toe. I love wearing hand knit socks. They're the thing I wear <laughs> The most often, by far, out of all my hand knits and so many of my socks are getting holes in the feet because I haven't been knitting regularly at all for the past few years, I am, feel like I've been wanting to knit more lately, so that's exciting to me just to kind of like mix the craft back in with sewing and with gardening and with all the other crafts that I take on. So it's nice to feel like knitting again. But hand knit socks are by far my most worn item, really just kind of hand knit accessories. I have to be honest, I don't really wear the sweaters that I knit in the past. So I think I'm just not a sweater knitter. I can't get the fit right for me. So I just prefer to buy ready to wear sweaters or to sew them if it's like a knits, like a sweatshirty type of sweater, but I'm just not a sweater knitter. It's just not who I am, but I love knit accessories. Hand knit socks in particular, I wear all the time and so many of mine are getting holes in them now. So I've been darning and fixing those and then also knitting some extra ones. So this is a recently finished pair that I cast on over a year ago now though. Like the, I can't believe how long these have been sitting in a project bag. I had one knit and then most of the second one, it just like needed to knit basically from here to the end for them to be finished. And so I recently finished them and I love them. The yarn is Yarn Yarn Co. I don't remember the colorway name and it doesn't really matter anyway because she doesn't die anymore from what uh, I know of her Instagram, like she never posts or anything. So I don't think she dies anymore, but it's this really pretty purple speckled indie dyed yarn and it has Stellina in it, which gives it that sparkly base. Sock knitting is really why I got into knitting in the first place. I remember Kemper of Junk Yarn. Um, she, I watched her podcast back in the day. She was one of the first ones that I ever watched. And she knit a lot of socks on her YouTube channel and podcast. And that's like really what set me off on wanting to learn how to knit in a big way. So I just really love sock knitting and I wear them a lot. So I'm really excited to have these. Andrew also really loves hand knit socks, which is great because he's such a knit worthy person. He has, I think, three pairs of socks in his collection of hand knit socks right now. And so um, because he loves them and wears them so much, I would show you the pair I finished for him most recently, but he's wearing them right now. I have cast on a new pair for him. So this is a work in progress. Get it out of here. And this is it. Aren't they so cute? I love them. I want to wear these myself. I might, hopefully there'll be some leftovers that I can knit myself or I'll buy like a similar color scheme, maybe like a red pair, but like a cranberry red and then like a bright red pop for the stripes, the heels, and then the toes. I don't really like a contrasting cuff for some reason. That's not my thing, but I love contrasting heels and toes. But I think this little stripe detail that I added is quite cute. So the main color yarn is this dark green 150 gram skein of Woolmiza. Again, I've had this in my stash almost since I started knitting, so I have no clue if they are even still in business anymore, but here's the tag for you to look at. Does it have the colorway? Uh, the colorway name is called Crocodile in German. So yeah, that's the dark green. And then the brighter chartreuse green pop that I'm using for the stripes, the heel, and eventually the toe, is these leftovers of Plucky Knitter. 
have no clue what the colorway name is anymore. I've had this for so long in my stash. I keep using it like for various color pops in projects. I've never knit a project entirely out of this yarn, but I love it for pops. Chartreuse is just one of my favorite colors in general. So here they are together. And then this is the little design that I came up with. Again, a vanilla sock. For Andrew, I cast on 68 stitches. For my own socks, I do 64. I do 68 for Andrew, a two by two rib cuff. And then the stripes I think are four rounds long. Yep, four rounds long, a six round stripe of the dark green in between, and then four rounds again of this, and then knit the leg as usual. A fish lips kiss heel, and then I will do my rounded toe again. So that's the sock. Another project I'm working on this one was a hot and heavy cast on because I cast this on when we were in a historical gaming convention with him in Pennsylvania um, a couple weeks ago. And so I was just knitting and watching them play games for a lot of the time. So got a lot done in that first sock. So hoping to finish that first one soon and cast the second one on soon after. The next project, which you will have seen if you watched Vlogtober, is my Stephen West mystery knit along the shawlography shawl. So this is still a work in progress. It will probably forever remain a work in progress. I don't think I'm going to finish it. Here's the thing. I loved this section right here. I was so excited for this section. I love the slip stitch sections. I started getting less on board with it with these things that remind me of like a telephone cable and these welts was just like not jiving with me. I don't know. Here's it's there's not like a cohesive element that weaves through the entire shawl for me and as a graphic designer it's just it doesn't jive with my personal style. I think it's really fun to knit. It's really fun to knit. So if you're just looking for a process knit, this is a great pattern for you. But for like a finished object, it feels very like, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. It's like listening to a toddler tell you a story. No offense to Stephen West at all. I love his designs. I think his designs are amazing. Exploration Station will forever be one of my favorite knits. I've knit a lot of Stephen West patterns and I wear a lot of my Stephen West patterns and I just think he's the coolest. I love his design so much, but this one is just really not doing it for me. However, it really got me into knitting again for the first time in a really long time when I just haven't felt like it, so I do credit it for that. But I, I just don't think I'm going to finish the design um, or the knit because I think I, I don't think I'll wear it. Once I saw Clue 4, that really sealed the deal for me. It was too like circus tenty vibes because of the stripes. I know I could substitute it with a different border and that's why I haven't ripped it out yet, but I just don't think I'm gonna finish it. It's like a little too, it's too much for me, too much for me. But I still think it was really fun to knit and I love how it turned out like so far regardless. It just doesn't jive with my personal style, even though I think it's really fun to knit and like aesthetically looks very fun as well. Again, just doesn't go with my personal style. So, yep, that's how this turned out so far. Jury's out if I will finish it or not. I probably won't, probably frog it and put this beautiful yarn back into my stash waiting to be used for something else. But you know what? I don't feel too bad because I haven't bought literally any yarn this year except for the two skeins that I bought for this shawl and then um, the advent calendar from Cat Sandwich Fibers. Other than that, I have purchased no yarn this year. So I've knit like exclusively from stash makes it sound better than it is because I really just haven't been knitting at all. I've been knitting socks here and there and picking out yarns from my stash for that. So, I mean, it doesn't really count. I just haven't really been knitting, but I haven't acquired anything either except for those two that I added to my collection from uh, this uh, project. And this is in my 
Paradise Island project bags. It's one of my absolute favorite bags. Drawstring bags are my favorite style. I like those the best. And this is a nice big bag for big shawls, big sweaters. I like the materials it's made out of. So yeah, really love Paradise Island bags. Okay, the next knitting project. And I think the last one I'm gonna show you before I show you some sewing stuff is a design actually. I've had this in the works for several years now, but I'm not even close to finishing it because I haven't really finished the design and of course I haven't been knitting, but I feel like I should just show you anyway and tell you about my idea. Don't steal it. Nobody out there take my idea and sell it off as your own. It's mine. <laughs> okay, so here's the plan. This is what it looks like so far. The yarn, let's start with the yarn is the Stress Knits yarn in the Dahlia colorway. This gorgeous, beautiful mauve color. So the plan is you knit a square of, it's either like Fisherman's Rib or Brioche, single color Brioche. I don't really know what it's called, but it's really easy to knit. There's no purling in it, which is, it makes it super, super speedy. I was first introduced to this stitch pattern when I knit some headbands for my mom and my sister. I really wanna make one for myself actually still, but I loved the stitch that I found in that headband. And it's either like a fisherman rib or a single brioche, or maybe those are the same thing. I don't know what it's called, but basically it knits fabric that looks like this and there's no purling in it. So it's really fast to knit. So the idea is that I'm going to have this brioche or fisherman's rib square and then I'm going to pick up stitches all along every edge and knit a cable of some sort. I don't know what the cable is going to be yet. I don't know like what style cable I mean it's going to be. This is tangled. And so it will have a cable around the edge like this in this little diamond and then from there I'm going to knit it out to a point to make a crescent shawl and I don't know it might just be garter stitch from there to there I have to like think about how I want it to look and with some sort of design along like the rib of it if that makes sense I don't I just don't I don't know yet but that's like the idea of the shawl I love the design aesthetic of it I like that it's all going to be one color um, but the thing that's kind of held me up with it lately is that I've recently discovered and decided the only shawls that I wear so much these days are my worsted weight shawls. So I'm kind of considering ripping this out. Stacy was very generous and donated this yarn to me for yarn support for this shawl. So I'll probably either pay her for the yarn or use it in a different design in the future. I don't know, but um, the yarn is so gorgeous. It has to be used for something. I don't, I don't know what yet, but it's so versatile. Like, I don't know what I'll use it for, but I'll definitely use it for something. And then I might rip it out and re-knit it in a worsted weight yarn because that I've just discovered those are my preferences. Like I reach for my Void Shawl um, by Melanie Berg and my Heady Shawl by Isolde Teague. Those are the two shawls I wear by far the most and they're both worsted weight and the only ones in my collection that are worsted weight shawls. So I think that says something about what I like to wear in the winter. I really go for those like chunkier knit pieces. So I think I'm going to frog what I've done so far. Again, it's not, it doesn't take that long to knit this just because, um, like I said, no purling. So it's actually pretty speedy to knit. I just haven't because I've been hemming and hawing about what to do with the design aspect of it and then find another use for this yarn. So yeah, that's the plan right now. That's the design idea. I really like the thought of it. I haven't finished it yet, obviously, but that is a work in progress. And so far it's been kind of tricky to write because as far as like keeping notes for the design aspect of it, because it's kind of a recipe. Like I keep track of how many stitches I cast on, but when I, you have to like block this before I start picking up the stitches for, um, for the cable that will be knit around all four sides. And I feel like this design works better as a recipe, like knit 
a nine inch by nine inch square. These are, this is what I cast on, keep knitting until it reaches nine inches because sometimes people's row gauge is different because everybody knits differently. So I haven't really come up with the best solution for how to write the pattern either, which has kind of stopped me because the stitch is so stretchy. You could really aggressively block this and make this a huge shawl. Like I said, this would be like the center of the shawl. So already it's like pretty big without any of the other features added to it. So it's a great base, but I think it'll be tricky to write up a pattern with a stitch count and I think a recipe would be better. But I know a lot of people are not, they, a lot of people like very specific directions when it comes to their knits projects, which I understand. So we'll, we'll see, but that's just like something in the back of my head that this pattern would probably be better suited for instructions that are like knit until it's 10 inches, you know, or whatever. And a lot of people may not like that. So that's that design project. Um, this is the project bag that it's in. This is one that was given to me by Catherine of, oh my gosh, what's the name? It's like something roses. Hold on, Bed of Roses. Catherine by Bed of Roses, she gave me this project bag several years ago and it's another one of my favorites. It is a zipper top that has this like gorgeous kind of collage style front to it and this really pretty print on the back. I had some fabric bleed onto it, which is why that red is on there, but I don't care. It's just one of my favorites. Okay, that's it for all of my knitting projects. Next, I'm gonna show you two sewing projects. The first one is a finished object, and it is this dress right here, which I showed on Instagram briefly, but this is McCall's M8104. Here's the pattern, and I used view C, view C that has the dolman, aka grown on sleeve, no cuff on it, and then pretty much sewed it outright with the exception that I took off the like center band and collar that wraps around it. Let me see if I can show you better on the line drawing. See on the line drawing how it has this like center band? Can you see that? I omitted that to make it like a clean edge, which I much prefer. And I looked on Instagram uh, to see other people's reviews of the project and what other people thought as they were sewing it. Several people mentioned that the project turned out a little too big for them. So I pretty much omitted the band all together, but used it as a facing for the edge of the bodice front and the center front of the skirt. Use that piece as a facing instead to give it the modern edge and didn't change my sizing. I just sewed with the smaller seam allowance because other people had mentioned that it turned out too big for them. So I felt pretty confident that it was gonna turn out okay, and it did. I mean, it's like just perfect. So if you try it, definitely like try sewing it this way. I would definitely recommend sewing with a smaller seam allowance than what the pattern suggests, which is five eighths of an inch is the usual, but I sewed mine with anywhere from like three eighths to half an inch for every seam. And then really, really tiny when I was adding the facing and then kind of winged it with the buttons, placing them where I pleased. You may have noticed if you follow me on Instagram, I'm, I've kind of mentioned that I don't like how the fabric waves as it gets further down. And that happens because the facing that I applied to it, uh, I applied interfacing to it. Interfacing is great because it gives fabric structure and stability, but because this is a super drapey fabric, the fabric now drapes differently than the self, than the main, the front of it. So the gravity is like pulling on this differently than it's pulling on the piece of the interfacing, which is kind of causing it to wave. And so the main is like fighting the facing a little bit. It's not terrible when it's on, there's like enough movement when I'm walking that you just don't really notice it so much, but it just kind of, it aesthetically bugs me a little bit, but not enough to hate the dress. I will say it's a, Gorgeous dress, the fit is amazing. I love the fabric that I used. It's this viscose 
Dobby fabric, which you can see has this kind of like Neps texture on it that kind of looks like polka dot, but it's in, it's with like stitching. I'm not really sure exactly what Dobby is, but I know it's like this kind of dot pattern that's in the same colorway as whatever the fabric color is. But yeah, from far away, it just reads like the dark green. And I really, really love this dress. I would definitely make it again. I think it's a great advanced beginner pattern. So if you've sewn a couple things and you're ready to try something new, um, I would really recommend this pattern. So again, that's McCall's 8104, my finished project. And I will say though, uh, briefly when I omitted like the neckband and the back or whatever, I was concerned that it might try to fall off the shoulders because it is quite low in the front. So when you have something that's low in the front, you can't also have it low in the back or it'll try to pull off your shoulders. But the neckline is so high already that it was not an issue at all. It does not try to fall off of my shoulders. So yeah, I mean, it's fine. The fit is fantastic. It's really comfortable. And I just think the features of it are really, really pretty. The sleeves kind of have this fluttery effect with the viscose fabric. And I love this under bust gathering detail that it has. I think it's just really feminine and pretty and yeah. I love this, so would highly recommend this pattern. And then the last project I'm going to share with you is a work in progress, and this is McCall's 7974. This is a tried and true pattern for many people. It's, a re it's definitely made its rounds on sewing internet. Uh, it's a very, very popular pattern, and I can see why after making it. This pattern is perfect for both advanced and new sewists. There are so many clever techniques in it. I love the way that it's constructed, the way that the uh, finishings on the inside like hide seams. It just, it just comes together so cleverly. I really, really, really love the pattern and can see why people love it so much. So I am not making a dress. I'm using a uh, view A right here. I'm not making the dress though. I'm just turning it into a top. I'm turning mine into a top because I saw this amazing inspo from Rouge Cree. I'm not sure if she's like the owner or like the creative director. I don't know for sure. G uh, Jean, Jean Damas. I don't know how to say her name, um, but I love this top that she's wearing in this inspo that I found on Pinterest. And so I'm modeling my project after that inspo that I found. I feel like my, ch my style has really been changing a lot lately, whereas I wanted to make a lot of dresses in the past. I still do, clearly, I just made a dress, but I'm really gravitating toward more separates right now. And I don't have very many tops in my wardrobe, like cute tops, it's a lot of knits tops, which I also like and are comfortable, but I don't really have many like stylish, statement-y tops. So I'm trying to add a few more of those to my wardrobe to pair with jeans or with skirts. And so that's kind of what the idea is behind this project. So I'm making view A, but rather than adding the skirt, I'm going to add like a peplum bottom to it, like my inspiration does. Alternatively, I could just extend the bodice of the dress to make it a little bit longer or leave it short if I wanted a crop top, but I really like the inspiration piece. So I'm going to add like a little peplum to it and I think it will be really cute. So I'm using this fabric that I have in my stash. It's leftovers from a previous project that I had enough to make uh, something else with and it's from Blackbird Fabrics. It's a viscose poplin. So it has a lovely drape. It's navy blue with this like small floral print on it. The one thing I will say, and I knew this was gonna happen going into the project, that because the fabric is both dark and the print is also very busy, it obscures a lot of the pattern details, like the underbust gathering, which you can't see at all, even from me holding that up, I feel, but it obscures like this underbust gathering. And there's also gathering along the shoulder seam and like really pretty details like that, that you just can't see because the fabric is so, busy but that's okay i'm kind of treating this like a wearable muslin if you will although i never really make muslins but just call this a muslin for the future times that i make this pattern because i'm sure i will make it again but it's just so clever i love the way that this pattern is designed and how 
how like the, in, the inside pieces like hide seams that are in here like seams from the construction of the front it's just so so clever so like I said any advanced or new sewist is really gonna find a lot of fun with this project and I think you'll just feel really accomplished when you make it just because the construction is so nice and you end up with a really beautiful garment. Sometimes McCall's patterns leave a lot to be desired uh, when it comes to finishing instructions. They're still written like patterns from when we had home mech classes back in the day, which we really don't have that now. So people don't grow up knowing how to sew or know, having these skills uh, like they would have then and would know how to finish the garment. So now when a new sewist tries to tackle something like a big four pattern and there's like raw edges on the inside and they're like, what did I do wrong? It's not you, it's the pattern because a lot of McCall's patterns don't give you instructions for finishing techniques on the inside. But this pattern so far has been really, really good about that. I'm not sure if they tell you to finish the shoulder seam or not, I can't remember, but there's a lot of like built-in finishing techniques with the way that the pattern is constructed. It reminds me a lot of the uh, Sicily slip dress by Sewing Mason patterns. I felt like that pattern was also super clever in its design about how the uh, construction of it finishes the inside, the interior of it automatically, just in how you're sewing the dress. It was also really clever. So it reminded me a lot of that as I've been sewing this pattern. So I definitely recommend it if you haven't sewn it already. I think you will really enjoy it if the pattern is your style. So again, McCall's 7974. So that and the knitting projects I showed you, those are my works in progress and finished projects right now. I hope you enjoyed seeing a little snippet into what I've been working on. I have a whole tab like or on my computer open with a bunch of different shawls that I have my eye on right now because I'd really like to cast on a new like gardening themed wrap or shawl. So I have a few options in mind. This is already getting quite long and we're gonna be doing more holiday stuff later. So I don't want to overload you with all of the things on Vlogmas day one. But I'm thinking sometime in like the next couple days, I'll share those like, I think there's seven tabs that I have open of different shawls or wraps that I'm considering right now. So I'll do like a roundup of like my current favorite wraps and shawls for you if you're interested in seeing that. I know a lot of people enjoy my pattern aesthetics and the way I like pick and choose patterns and yarns together. So I think that will be fun to share with you guys. So I'll be doing that at some point in the next couple days if you're interested in that. So that's it for now and I will see you in a little bit. On Christmas Day, I saw three ships come sailing in. On Christmas Day in the morning, these two nerds talking about their games. <laughs> I said these two nerds talking about their miniature games. Intellectual. <laughs> And what was in those ships all three on Christmas Day in the morning? What time is it? Christmas tree time! Oh, Christmas tree! I can't stop yawning. Every shot you take. We are on our way to go get our Christmas tree and some uh, festive trimmings of greenery to, to put around the house. Exciting things. Um, yes. So uh, what better way to start Vlogmas than with decorating the house, right? Right. Right? right. We're actually not going all out for dinner tonight. We're gonna get a rotisserie chicken, which is like one of Andrew's favorite <laughs> things. Andrew's comfort, food, comfort food is rotisserie chicken and we're gonna roast some veggies to go with it. It smells so good out here. Last year I got a little mini tree for our bedroom. After that I said no more, never again. 
there were nothing but Christmas pine needles in our bedroom for like months afterwards. No matter how many times I vacuumed, I just kept finding them. So I told myself, never again with the little tree in our room, never again. I got these real greeneries last year. They're like a garland that they string together for you. They have it wound up in here and I put those on our fireplace last year and they looked so pretty and smelled so good. So I'm definitely gonna do that again this year. And I'm also gonna get some for the new bookshelf and for the floor mirror as well. I think that'll be really pretty. This one is a strong contender. I like the kind of shorter fat ones. I think they're the prettiest in my opinion. So that is definitely a contender. For the rotisserie chicken hold on let me take off my mask quick stop off for the rotisserie chicken and i just walked into walgreens to see if they would take me as a walk-in for the booster pringles. you're getting yourself rotisserie chicken what pringles oh no <laughs> no those are so gross oh, they were good Our dinner like I said easy we just got a rotisserie chicken but we're making a couple veggie sides I'm gonna be doing some boiled carrots and you are making some rosemary roasted mashed potatoes yes. with some thyme with some thyme to our creepy basement. Oh, that's the creepy painting. Mom, that's the painting. Oh, she hasn't seen Man She Bear hasn't Pig. seen Man Bear Pig, no. It's a long story, but guys, it's a funny one. At some point, I will tell you. My mom knows all though. That's a very handsome tree. Oh, it's so pretty. Modest. I like it. I think it looks nice. I, I love that star. Lovely. I can't see the star. It's like a mercury glass star. <laughs> Christmas time when all the lights are coming on. What do 
do you think? Over the window, like on the thing, or over the door frame? Didn't we put that outside last year? We did, but we have a lot. We're leaving footprints in the snow Drive aside the fire's glow Awaiting Santa's ho 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 Christmas time is finally here Shout for joy and sing with cheer Sound of laughter in the air Peace and love are everywhere There's a gift for you from me It's wrapped and placed well underneath the tree I'll hold you close and take your hand Give a smile and share a laugh Tree is decorated We have garlands up on the bookshelf and mirror and fireplace Decorated a little bit in the kitchen Things are coming together I think that's it for me today, but I will see you tomorrow for lots of New York festive fun. Night!